Hello and welcome. I'd like to talk today about a man by the name of Charles Darwin. When you hear the name Charles Darwin, what image is conjured up in your mind? Do you imagine a man that deserves condemnation or a man who deserves recognition for his contribution to science? We'll be talking about five myths about Darwin in today's video. Was it something Darwin actually said or something that we just heard that he said? We all know how quickly rumors and tall tales can spread. Yet nobody likes to be slandered, so we must be fair. Are we being fair to Darwin? Let's look at five myths and try our best to uncover the truth. Myth number one, Darwin said humans come from monkeys. Did he really say that? The idea that man descended from monkeys or apes is one of the frequently repeated statements that is attributed to Darwin. But you know what? He never said it. It's just simply false. What did Darwin say? In his well-known book on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life that was first published in 1859, Darwin doesn't even address the issue of our human ancestors. He doesn't say anything about a relationship between monkeys, apes, and humans. He didn't even speak of human evolution or man's origin in this book. Rather, he pointed out the similarities between various organisms and suggested that all life forms were related to one another. It wasn't until Darwin published his book, The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex, that he addressed the topic of the origin of man. However, he never said that humans descended from apes. Rather, he stated that humans and apes have a common ancestor. Myth number two. The second myth or misconception is that his book is about the origin of man. The first part of the title is often omitted so that the title is incorrectly passed on as the origin of species with the implication or outright false claim that the book is about the origin of man. Some people also misunderstand it to be about the origin of life. Neither of these statements are correct. The book is based on investigation and observation, examining the characteristics of various organisms, and again, how organisms are related to one another within the framework of evolution. So to sum it up, Darwin's book on the origin of species by means of natural selection, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life, published by Darwin, is not about the origin of man, and not the origin of life. And it's not Darwin simply conjuring up theories with no basis for his statements or conclusions. It's based on scientific research, investigation, observation, and evidence. Darwin is addressing the question of where species come from, the possibility of whether they are related to one another, and the general process of the evolution of species. It's not an attempt to trace the origin of any particular species, let alone humans. Myth number three. Because Darwin didn't publish his theory of evolution for over 20 years, many people throughout the years have proposed that it was out of fear of controversy between science and religion, or disrupting social order, fear of how it would be received by the scientific community, or even for personal reasons such as upsetting his religious wife, or because he experienced psychological conflict due to the implications of the theory of evolution. The time gap between collecting his research and publishing his book in 1859, a time period over two decades, is known as Darwin's delay. In a paper published in 2007 by Dr. John Van Wy, a historian of science and founder of Darwin Online, he concludes that there's no clear evidence for any of these claims. His conclusions are based on the writings of Darwin, those who knew Darwin intimately, and other historical evidence. Dr. Van Wy states, after Darwin's death in 1882, countless accounts of his life and work appeared. In none of his obituaries, or the many biographies and other accounts of his life in succeeding decades is there a hint that Darwin put off publishing. Only in the 1940s and 1950s did the modern belief of Darwin's delay begin to gradually appear. He also says, 
modern writers inherited Darwin's delay from other writers who did not have access to the full manuscript corpus. So, Darwin was simply working all the while and publishing his book on the origin of species when he was ready to do so. And the historical evidence does not support the idea that Darwin delayed publication out of fear or that he kept his theory of evolution secret. In fact, Darwin spoke openly about the theory of evolution on many occasions. And after examining the original writings, essays, and publications of Darwin, Dr. John Van Wy concludes, Instead of a man afraid of his secret theories being revealed to his prejudiced contemporaries, it is demonstrated that Darwin was understandably very busy and began his species book when he had completed work in hand, just as he intended to do all along. Myth number four, Darwin was an atheist. Darwin is also accused of being an atheist. But did he ever declare himself to be one? He was asked about his religious beliefs often during his life and never made this claim. Darwin was baptized in the Church of England and progressively moved away from the religion of Christianity, considering it to have mythical claims, just as the Victorian Christians considered other religions to have mythical claims. However, he did say this in 1879 in a letter to John Fordyce. My judgment often fluctuates. In my most extreme fluctuations, I have never been an atheist in the sense of denying the existence of a God. I think that generally, and more and more so as I grow older, but not always, that an agnostic would be the most correct description of my state of mind. He also said that he didn't think that the universe is the result of blind chance, and that there must be a first cause with intelligence that set up the laws of nature. There is also a somewhat popular myth that Darwin reverted back to Christianity on his deathbed. This story was started by someone who didn't even meet Darwin. Some fundamentalist Christians still repeat the story, but it isn't true. It was publicly denied by his sons in print. And unless someone can produce a statement from Darwin in which he proclaims atheism, which to date has not been done, then we cannot say that he was an atheist. Myth number five. Darwin coined the term survival of the fittest. Actually, he didn't. The philosopher Herbert Spencer first used the phrase after reading Charles Darwin's work and noting the similarities between his economic theories and Darwin's theories. He said, The survival of the fittest, which I have sought to express in mechanical terms, is that which Mr. Darwin has called natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle of life. Alfred Russell Wallace suggested that Darwin used this phrase in the place of the term natural selection, and Darwin used it in a later publication of his book on the origin of species, with the intended meaning being organisms better designed for an immediate local environment. But it's important that we keep in mind that variation between individuals and heredity are also required along with natural selection for evolution to occur. So now you know that Darwin never said, Man Descended from Monkeys. His famous book on the origin of species wasn't about the origin of man. He wasn't afraid to publish his findings. He never coined the term survival of the fittest, and he wasn't an atheist. Again, nobody likes to be slandered. It's not fair to make false statements about anyone, let alone someone who isn't here to even defend himself. So let's, you and I, dispel some of these myths. Next time, Someone slanders Darwin in your presence. I hope you'll be the first to defend him now that some of the myths about Darwin have been cleared up in this video. Keep in mind that it's important always to be fair and just to Darwin, to everyone, to ourselves. Until next time, take care.